Matteo Renzi, President of the Council of Ministers, will now address the audience. Il Presidente del Consiglio dei Ministri, Matteo Renzi, prende ora la parola. Ambassador Phillips, General Hort, Consul General Rupu, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to celebrate two important occasions. The Memorial Day, marking our thoughts for those who lost their lives while serving and protecting our countries. And uh, 70 years since the end of World War II and victory in Europe. For me, it was an honor to take part in this celebration as mayor of Florence, representing a, a city that witnessed the sacrifice of these young Americans. Today, I'm honored and privileged to bring to you the thoughts of all Italians. As prime minister of the country that uh, owes to these young soldiers such an important part of its destiny. These are sacred grounds. Our spirit is lifted by the ultimate sacrifice of these young Americans. They died to save us. These sons of the United States of America have become our own sons as well. Their example reminds us that our freedom came with a price, and it continues to came with a price, paid daily by the men and the women in uniform who protect us, our cities, our children, our future. When announcing victory to the world, President Truman said that his joys were diminished by the supreme consciousness of the terrible price we have paid. Even in the moment of ultimate success, after long years of war, the tragedy of our lost lives was casting a shadow over his happiness and of the allies. So it's natural for me to think of those Americans and Italians often hand in hand, engaged all over the world to protect lives, ensure stability, uphold our values. Many times, when women and men serving our countries paid the price for our freedom and prosperity and for the freedom of the others, I am here to give a solemn homage to those men and women Italian and American, serving their country close to home or far away. We should not be afraid to call heroes, those who fall serving their country and defending universal values. Seventy years ago, peace was brought back to our country. A new dawn of hope cast a light after the long night of despair and destruction of fascism and dictatorship. Italy will never forget its debt of gratitude to the United States of America, our sister nation and the strongest ally. Now we will forget our brotherhood with other nations who stood united to face the ultimate threat to the peace. Thanks to these bonds, Europe now lives in prosperity and above all in peace as a union of nations and peoples, those bonds are not forgotten. We need them today more than ever. Because peace is not eternal, it has to be cherished and protected now more than ever. And what Europe and the United States share, in the words of President John F. Gerald Kennedy, is not just any peace, but a peace that makes life worth living. Not only a peace for our time, but a peace in all times.
the symbols of this cemetery are powerful. We are all equal in death. Like the thousands of identical white crosses on this grass. These crosses mark the sacrifice of young soldiers coming from Idaho, from Nebraska, from Georgia, all the 50 states. They came from all over the United States and died all for a land they knew very little about. In the 40s of the last century, the world was different. It was a bigger world where almost everyone did not travel. There was no TV, no internet. For the United States, Europe was a land living only in the tales of immigrants. But when Europe was about to lose its battle for a future of freedom, thousands of men came from the USA to help Europe. Not to destroy, not to conquer, but to stop absolute danger, to protect the weak, to defend the victims of revenge, to uphold freedom and democratic values, to make the world a better place. Part of them never came back home. More than 5,000 here. These numbers, these names are impressive. But we should not think of numbers. We should think of each one of them individually. Today, we remember them uh, as heroes, knowing that probably none of them would have wanted to become hero. Instead, each one of them would have ever wanted to, and, uh, to grow up, to have children, to grow old. All those who are remembered here had no future, but their sacrifice hallowed Italy and Europe to have the future. For this reason, these humble crosses remind us that our values unite us. They make us one, a pluribus um. They remind us that what makes us strong is our struggle for justice and for the protection of our values. In protecting them, in affirming them, we define our own identity and we respond to those who challenge those values. We respond to those who defy our culture. We respond to those who attack our open society also today. We counter those who want us to live in terror. We respond by instead like living in the light of knowledge, of tolerance, respecting others, accepting differences, and embracing diversity. We respond by being united. Because embracing diversity, like the Italian land those American soldiers died for, make us one. That is a lesson we must learn from these crosses. It's now 70 years since the, the end of World War II and the world has changed dramatically. It has probably changed faster than in any other 70 years in the history of mankind. Our civilization and technology evolved very quickly. We live in a different world, and yet we saw that lessons from 70 years ago are so crucial for addressing today's challenges. From terrorism, to regional instabilities, to mass migration flows in the Mediterranean Sea, to the complexities of international cooperation. My point is that the memory of those events and of the lessons they teach us is crucial not only for the past, is crucial for our present, is crucial for our future. Some of you have direct memory of those days. That's more than an heritage. It's a legacy. I'm 40 years old. The generation of my grandparents is the last one with direct memory of the world. We now have a huge responsibility. The responsibility of ensuring that the 
this legacy is transmitted properly to my generation and particularly to that of my children. We are responsible for making sure that World War II continues teaching us what were the tragic mistakes that shall never again be made and teaching us the lessons that we need to learn. Today's celebration remind us that we can and we must try to keep that hope alive. Eternal and universal ideals can find an eternal embodiment. That, my friends, is the peace of all time that President Kennedy was describing. Miei cari connazionali, siamo partiti un mese fa da Marzabotto in un viaggio virtuale e fisico che ha toccato i luoghi della resistenza, che ha toccato Milano, che ha commemorato ieri il centenario della prima guerra mondiale nei luoghi dove il piave mormorava. E oggi chiudiamo queste celebrazioni della memoria di fronte al nostro principale amico e alleato, il popolo degli Stati Uniti d'America, dicendo grazie a chi ha perso la vita perché noi potessimo essere liberi e prendendo un impegno a lottare ogni giorno per la pace, per la democrazia, per la libertà. Il nostro compito è essere degni di un luogo come questo. I giovani che qui riposano sono morti anche per noi, per ciascuno di noi. God bless you, God bless our friendship, God bless our peoples.